Welcome to Techie Tool Time with Rachel. Um, I haven't been doing very many of these, even right now. It says my connection is weak, and it's because I'm in the portables. So I'm hoping maybe the connection will get a little bit better. Can you all see me better now? Um, my screen always looks the same, um, but when the connection gets low, I've noticed when I upload it that it gets kind of fuzzy. Um, so it's been fun experimenting with Facebook Live, but this seems to be a major drawback is the connection going in and out. Anyway, let's cut to the chase and talk about what I want to mention today. Um, I want to talk about how we take attendance. Um, attendance policies kind of keep getting more and more strict for various reasons. Um, we've always needed to take it for financial aid purposes. Um, but now there's some other programs that need to have some more data on how often students are attending prior to exams and how they're performing on those exams. So for me, most of y'all met me at some point and I am a little bit ADD. Um, so, you know, I'm really good at taking attendance by hand if I do it at the beginning of class, but especially if I have students that walk in late, um, it's hard for me to stop what I'm doing check if they came in, what time they came in, um, and things like that. Um, I try to encourage my students to be prompted on time and not interrupt class, um, but I do allow them to attend if they're late. Um, so I think there were several students that were coming in late that either I counted as absent, um, but then also if they were excessively late, I was having a hard time keeping track of that. And that's something I need to know. Like if you're excessively late, that's not appropriate. Um, and it's something we probably need to talk about. So I have been trying to few, do a few different things. I used to kind of pass around the piece of paper um, to let students sign in, but still that was really laborious on my part, depending on how many lectures and labs I had. Um, you know, if I had six different classes with different students I was seeing every day, I would have to manually go through these sheets and keep a tally on either D2L or my Excel spreadsheet. And this is not functional for me. Um, it was too time consuming. Um, so just right off the bat, you guys let me know in the comments down below, um, how do y'all keep attendance? Um, so I'm gonna tell y'all what I did this semester and not only am I really liking it, but my students um, caught on really quickly and they seem to like it or not mind it really overall. And that is taking attendance with a QR code. So if y'all have never uh, used a QR code, this is what one looks like. And there are kind of three things that kind of went on here and how students could mark themselves as attending. This is a test sheet that I'm going to show y'all in a second um, how I made this. But um, I would put this on the document camera in my class. So it's on the projection screen as soon as I got in there. And so students could actually scan this QR code with their own device. Um, by the end of the semester, I would say at least half, if not two thirds of my class were using their own device and using this sheet. Um, if they didn't care for the actual QR code, I did give them a shortened URL code. Um, yes, this is a shortened code and yes, it's still kind of lengthy. So most students, if they're using their device, learned how to use a QR reader. There are several free ones. Some phones come with them automatically. If students didn't have their own device or didn't bring it to class, um, I would also have my other iPad um, sitting in the front of class. And this is showing you guys how I did it. It's a Google form, um, but this would just be laying in there so they could touch the box. Um, the little keyboard will come up and they would type their name in. All right, and I'm gonna show y'all what that looks like on the spreadsheet in a second. So once they type their name in, again, they caught on to this really quickly. Um, once one student puts their name in, I just have my form set up to where they can submit another response and the students could really quickly time, uh, type it in. Um, when I first started doing this, um, there was a little bit of a learning curve. My students really caught on within the first week, I'd say two or three classes of doing this. Um, and then especially when more and more of them started using their own devices, this worked much better. 
Um, so there are a few free ones. Um, there's one actually for QR code scanners that you can recommend to your students. Um, I'll put the links down below, but quick scan is probably the most popular because you can have it on both um, Android and Apple devices. So that way your students are using the same scanner. As an instructor and as a QR code creator, I prefer this one. It's called Crafter with a Q. And this is kind of a fun little app. It has a great history of codes you've scanned in the, um, in the, hit, in the past. Um, and also when you're creating your own codes, you can make them colored or have different shapes and designs. So that's kind of fun if you're making handouts and things like that for your classroom to go paperless. Um, but if you've never scanned a QR code, so I open up the QR code scanner. You can see my camera open here. And I doubt I can do this fully on camera, um, but y'all can kind of see if this is on the projection screen, um, I will hold this up and it will scan and it'll ask me, do I want to go to the URL? So this is what it looks like in this app if it scans. Some apps will automatically open it. That's actually another reason I like this app. I don't like just automatically opening it. I like seeing what the address is before my iPad opens it. And then it brings me to the same screen um, on my personal device as it's taking the students if they're using my device to log in. And again, if you're wondering if this is taking a lot of time for my students to do, the answer is no. Um, again, they caught on super, super fast. So how did I create it? I'm going to show you all really fast um, on my computer. But if you all are interested in this, feel free to reach out and I can help you set up your first one. So let's get into it. So, um, I used a Google form and it's really just because I am comfortable with Google and I didn't jump into OneDrive and things like that until the middle of the semester. I'm still playing with the differences between the two form versions. Um, and so what you want to do is put in your first question and it's going to be short answer. And so in playing with this, You'll see why in a second. Um, if you want your students to do their first and last name, you need them to do it separately. Okay? So in the future, I'm only going to have my students only do their last name. Why am I not going to have them do their first name? Well, some of them use nicknames. And you'll see why in a second in my spreadsheet when I'm actually counting the attendance, how that can become a headache. So their last name shouldn't change. Hopefully they know how to spell their last name and there is no chance of their last name being put in as a nickname. So I think last name only is fine. But again, if you want first name as well, you'll need to come in here and add another question um, to this. So I just scanned my QR code on my personal device and put my name in and it submits these responses. I've just kind of been playing around with this little tester. So here's my name, and I've been typing in the last name Smith. And again, this will kind of build up. Um, this one's kind of making these little bar charts. Once you start getting a lot of students in here, it no longer looks like this. It'll just kind of make a list of your students. This looks really pretty. This little graph is kind of a nice way to quickly check your attendance for that class. Um, but what I was doing is I had one sheet. I used the same sheet the whole semester. Let me turn this around when I say this. The number one question that teachers have been asking me about this is, well, can't students just type in the other student's last name? And there's two things that I've done to prevent this or another thing I was kind of thinking about. Remember I said I normally would pass that sheet around. Well, wouldn't students just normally sign the other students' names? When I passed the sheet around, I never really noticed that very often. But I told students I would count them. So if I counted 30 students and I checked the roll online that day and there were 32, I told them I would give them all no absent, no attendance that day. Um, and so that really scared them in typing in someone else's last name. That's the first thing. The second thing was actually a lot of students don't know each other's last names, or if they do, they don't know how to spell it. So if it's not spelled correctly, you're going to see in my spreadsheet, it won't pick it up. All right. 
Um, so we're on our Google form. We're collecting responses. This is live in real time um, on my personal device here. Here, let's try and put my last name in again. So I just submitted my answer, and then this just updated to five responses, and you can see Glazner went up one. So this updates very, very quickly, and I love that. So over here on the right-hand side of your Google Form is a spreadsheet, and that's how we, we want to view our responses. So here's it in Sheets view. This is like Excel with Word. And what is great about this is the students are typing in their last name. Again, if you want them to do their first name, that'll be another column. And then when, every single time they type their name in, it gives them a timestamp. This is really, really helping me keep track of how many students are showing up to my course late. Um, I haven't found a way to use a macros to do this yet. So if you're watching this and know how to write a macros with this much info for time, that would be great. Okay, so... Um, over here, um, what you're going to need to do is make a list of all your students. And this is how I'm going to keep track of how many absences they've had in the class. So I just took my role sheet from D2L, downloaded it, and copied all the last names into my sheet. So this is copied in. This is what the students are typing in. So over here, these are the number of absences or um, attendance periods the students have uh, come to. There's two ways to type this in. I actually personally like to do it in positive attendance um, first, and then I do the warning students over here if they've missed too many. So I'm going to show you all the difference in how to type those in. So what we're going to do is put in a little equation. I guess really this isn't a macros, um, really. Uh, but anyway, we're going to type in a little equation here that is going to count how many times the last name Glazner has been typed in in my list. Now this is a short list, but by the end of the class period, you can imagine how many times students have typed in each of their names. Um, so that equation is, you gotta put the equal sign, count if, parentheses, and this is called a range. So you're gonna highlight every single name that has been typed in. Do not, you're not going through and selecting Glazner each time. We're going to let the Excel sheet or the spreadsheet sheets, the sheets sheet do that ourself itself. One thing that's really important is you've got to have these dollar signs around your range. You'll notice that this starts at B2 and my names end at B6 here. Now that I've typed in more, I need to actually expand this. So make that into B6. Uh, a quick way to get these little money signs is to push the F4 key and they'll automatically show up or you can manually type them in. So this is the range that the sheet is going to search and then you're going to tell it what to search for. This is a little bit laborious to set up uh, right off the bat and I haven't found a way to give it a shortcut yet. But you type in the student's last name. So when I first set this up, I had to type in each individual student's name. Um, I tried to tell it to look at the cell where I already had the name, but that wasn't working. Um, but again, this maybe took five minutes per class to set up once I got the hang of it. You do need the quotation marks because that's telling it this is what you're looking for. And then we push enter. So I had the number one for Glazner, but since I signed in one more time recently, um, my count went up. And so we need to do this for all of them. I'm going to extract. Expand my range. There we go. And so you can see Glazner has showed up twice. One, two. Smith has showed up to my class three times. One, two, three. And Zoo, I have no idea how I came up with that, has not showed up to my class any times. So this kind of quickly, if I know we've had six class periods, I can kind of eyeball it. Now over here, what I like to do is I like to make a midterm column. And then I also like to make a final column. So at the midterm column, I'm going to know in my head how many attendants, you know, how many times a student should have attended. So let's say that if a student in this made up class attended less than two times, then they're either going to be failed, attendance dropped, whatever your policy is. So that's going to be another count if equation. That's one of the reasons I like this. I'm using the same equation to do two different things. 
So in this count if, it's going to be per student. So instead of a range, it's just going to be one cell. Because we're range counting the number of times I've showed up. So this is going to give me an easier way to evaluate if this student has missed too many times. So over here, it's going to say count if this cell, that's how many times they've attended. And then if they've attended less than the number of times they should attend. So in this class, maybe they needed to attend two times in order to receive credit. Again, you have to have those quotation marks. So since Glazner has attended two times, they, they get a zero because they haven't attended less than two times. Now, Zoo down here has not attended at all. So you'll see that they've attended less than two times one time. Um, again, all I'm looking for in this column essentially is if a number showed up. So if your cutoff for how many times somebody has to come is 10, you're going to put 10 in here. And it doesn't matter if the number is 1, 2, or 5. If there's a number in this column, those are students either you need to contact or attendance drop or, again, whatever your policy is. So by midterm, I'm looking for a certain number of attendances, um, absences here to decide if they're going to be dropped or failed. Um, same thing with the final. Again, you could actually make one of these one for each month, and that way you know, well, if they missed three times that month, I'm going to attendance drop them again, or whatever your policy or your standards are for that. This is, again, when you have a long list of students, this other column really quickly lets me know, okay, these five students are in attendance issues versus all 40 are going to have some kind of numbers because hopefully they've come to class at least once. So hopefully that didn't sound too complicated. Um, if you're new to Google Sheets or Excel, since we all have access to Microsoft products, this both programs can do this online now. Um, feel free to contact me. This, again, is extremely useful with my real classes. Students have logged in over 700 individual times. That means when I sent that piece of paper around using this method, that's 700 little names I needed to check to see and count up manually if students attended or not. Um, and again, with the timestamp on here, that's really helping me keep track also of um, people being tardy. This is sheet I actually come to once a week, and I look through all the timestamps to try to evaluate if students are attending um, you know, tardy or not, because um, my policy in it, this is if they are late three times, it counts as an absence. Um, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Again, I'm still working on an equation to count up my timestamp. So if you're watching this and you know how to do that, put it down below. But um, let me know if using a QR code might be a attendance possibility for y'all. And again, I definitely want to hear how y'all are taking attendance because this is just something I came up with, but maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, but thank you for tuning in to Techie Tool Time, and it's been fun showing you guys this. Have a good rest of the semester. Bye, guys.